Hello, welcome, thank you for joining me. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to do some in-context modeling. Uh, In-context in context modeling means that we're going to be starting on the assembly level or working our way down, typically and sometimes called a top-down uh, modeling approach. What we've been doing in class so far has been a bottom-up uh, modeling approach where we're starting with parts and putting other parts together and doing assembly. This way, what we're doing is we're starting with some very basic uh, sketch elements within the assembly or uh, some other elements within the assembly and then have parts that are derived off those elements in the assembly. So in a way, what we're doing is we're drawing with a, starting with a blank template in an assembly and designing all of our parts to go with that down from the top. Top being the assembly, the bottom uh, being uh, the parts that are associated with the assembly. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling a very basic uh, model of a handgun. This is a handgun that Garrett Griffith, uh, one of my uh, students from last year, put together. And we're going to take some basic dimensions off of this handgun and do this handgun in a top-down approach. Bang. So, he did a bottoms-up approach. There were some, uh, some in-context uh, elements in here, but uh, not, in the, not to the full extent that we're going to be modeling here in just a few minutes. So what I did is I started uh, with uh, my model, my uh, assembly model, uh, with a front sketch. With the front sketch, if we right click and go on to that, you can see some of the elements I put in here. What I've done is I've uh, put a uh, circle in here at the, the appropriate diameter compared to Garrett's model uh, to define where the revolver, uh, uh, where the revolve element's going to be. So it's going to be the outside diameter of that. It also defines where the, the bullet chamber is going to be within that. This bullet chamber also has a relationship with the barrel. So we're going to be using this circle in order to uh, define where the barrel is going to be. Here's the base of the, uh, the body of the gun. So everything is going to be enclosed within that. So this barrel is going to be able to rotate around that. And uh, I included that too in our front sketch. You notice where the origin is in the front sketch. I think it's appropriate to put it here right in the middle of the, the revolve element, uh, the revolver element, the revolver barrel. And this also uh, defines where the middle of the, of the body of the gun is. So we have a lot of nice, uh, clean uh, relationships established here. And a uh, uh, fully defined drawing, fully defined sketch. Let's go ahead and rebuild that. From that, I did a right sketch profile. So let's rotate that over here and make that normal too and take a look at that. So we still have our elements in here from our uh, front sketch. Our front sketch is still here, and from the front sketch, I drew some elements that allowed me to put together my right sketch. So let's go ahead and modify that. You can see the front sketch is gray in the background. And with the right sketch, I drew a line here that defined uh, the top edge and the bottom edge of the barrel uh, in regard to uh, its revolve feature. I put a, a distance relationship between that and the body of the gun. I also bo uh, borrowed uh, with a coincident relationship here on uh, what would appear to be the top of the of the body of the gun in the front sketch and I made a coincident relationship with that so this line also represents the very top of the body of the gun then it goes out over here to the barrel portion I put a center line in here and uh, made that coincident with the center of the circle to define in the front sketch it's going to be the axis of uh, where the the barrel is going to be the the hole in the barrel now we have the body of the gun over here. I'm not going to go through a whole lot of detail. This is just going to rep or create a just a very simple model. But down here is the handle of the gun. So there's a couple things that we need to consider here too. Uh, we're also going to put together a top sketch, and the top sketch is going to define each one of these features, both the barrel, the body, and the handle of the gun, and how wide it's going to be. So let's go ahead and rebuild this, and you notice it isn't fully defined. We do have some flexibility here with this and I did that deliberately so we can see what that's going to look like when we uh, make some uh, modifications to our uh, assembly uh, sketches our design sketches in the assembly that drive all the parts and see how that affects our parts so let's go ahead and rebuild this and again I did my top sketch and top sketch is uh, related to uh, all the other sketches so we want to do our front sketch first. It's got a little bit of detail. The right sketch has got a lot more detail. And the top sketch actually has a lot less detail. So again, I use uh, the, the origin as a, a way to uh, create some uh, continuity between the three different sketches that we're drawing, three different design sketches. So I drew a center line down the middle of that. And uh, I define this a little bit better too. So we have a handle thickness, which is going to be defined by these two lines. And I actually put some uh, annotations in there. 
So if you can see, if you go over here to our property manager, you can see the, the, you know, the annotation in there, handle thickness. So just in case, sometimes these drawings can be very, uh, in the assembly level, can be very confusing. It's nice to be able to label these things. It's a good practice to do so, so that you can follow it a little bit better if you're not certain what exactly what you're looking at. So now I have here a body thickness of a certain dimension, of a certain uh, value, and a barrel thickness of a certain value. So let's go ahead and rebuild that. And we're almost at the point where we're going to uh, go ahead and do our first part within the assembly. So I'm going to conclude that, or include our uh, video at this point, and then we'll start building our parts in subsequent videos.